Hello, everyone. This is Lili Chen from National Institute of Standards and Technology. Today, I will introduce NIST cryptographic standards and discuss their usage in cybersecurity. Um, NIST has a long history in developing encryption standards. The first standard was published in 1977 as Federal Information Processing Standard 46. That is an algorithm called the Data Encryption Standard, uh, commonly called the DAS. Over the past 40 years, NIST continues to evolve its cryptographic standards in two major aspects. First, because of the internet usage, NIST enabled to use public key cryptography in internet security. And also because this surface-state uh, cryptographic analysis method, NIST enhanced the security strength, strength in their cryptographic standards. Today, almost all the digital devices use NIST cryptographic standard to protect information and protect operations. So this is a chart about NIST cryptographic standards. This is not a complete list, and I also do not think you need to remember these numbers. Just to give you some idea about NIST cryptographic standard. On the left is a public key based like a digital signatures and the key establishment. In the middle column is symmetric key based include block ciphers and mode of operations, hash functions and message authentication code. NIST also publish a lot of guidelines, for example, like a key generation guidelines and the key management guidelines. Besides the standard for the cryptographic algorithms, NIST standards also cover some primitive uh, tools like a random number generation and the key derivation function. Then you must have a question about how NIST can make a decision about what to standardize. So there are some major methods NIST selected their standards. The first one is a cryptographic algorithm computation, like AES and SHA-3. And the second is uh, adopt the standard developed in other standard organizations. For example, like uh, IETF, IEEE, X9F1, uh, and others. So NIST also developed some new standard based on the well-accepted research results, uh, for example, like a key derivation function and also about select among submissions, for example, like mode of operations. These are major kind of methods for NIST select cryptographic standard. Through the computation, that means NIST can leverage the expertise internationally to for the cryptographic uh, algorithm design. Adopt the uh, standard from other organizations means NIST can adopt the best practice in the industry. And also NIST constantly communicate with the research community about the new standards. We say that uh, NIST crypto, stand, uh, crypto standard is a cornerstone for cybersecurity. It, they are used in two major kind of uh, aspects. The first one is over the link to protect uh, the protocols. For example, they are used in the internet key exchange and the transport layer security. So how they use them and they use the public key cryptography uh, to establish a symmetric key. And then 
use a symmetric key to protect the data. So like Ike and TLS both use this kind of uh, models. For the AES protection, they are block ciphers like AES and uh, HMAC. And the recent years, many authenticated encryption uh, was adopted like GCM and CCM. Another major usage about uh, NIST uh, cryptographic standards is for the charted platform. Um, the previous talk before this talk is the charted platform mod module, TPM, and uh, developed, developed by TCG. So the principle is to establish a charted platform in a device. Why? Because today's digital devices adopt open platforms and allow um, up, update, patch, and installation. Everyone has the experience to download a new application or to make a software patch or update. So public key-based digital signature are used for establishing charted platform including uh, uh, verify software, verify firmware, so it can form a uh, trust chain. So the secure boot basically is from the root of trust to um, the firmware, to the operating system and software applications. And the symmetric key algorithms are used uh, to protect the data stored in the devices. Then uh, let's come back to the NIST crypto graphic standards. Uh, NIST uh, uh, developed these uh, uh, crypto graphic standards for non-national security federal information systems. The publications um, have three uh, different uh, formats. The first one is a federal information processing standards. Uh, for example, we mentioned uh, DES and AES is also specified in uh, FIPS. And then the second is a special publications like a recommendation for key establishment, recommendation for uh, key derivation function. The third category is a NIST internal our interagency report, we call it a NISTER. Most uh, NISTERs are kind of about a technology report and the NIST research report. Um, so you often heard a term called approved. Um, so you will ask what it means by approved. Approved is defined as FIPS approved, all NIST recommended in a special publication. So you will see a lot of cipher suite, for example, in TLS. Some are considered as NIST approved and some are not. So the, the, the reason is that some are not specified in NIST cryptographic standards. Um, so the first of the first is you uh, for the government usage required to use approved cryptographic algorithms. Uh, that's not enough. We need to consider where uh, uh, these uh, algorithms are implemented. So then there is a concept called a cryptographic module. A cryptographic module is a kind of combination of hardware, firmware, software, and uh, inside a cryptographic boundary. The next sentence is more important, is that a cryptographic module implement uh, um, approved cryptographic algorithms. Well, so this has a cryptographic module validation program to through the uh, audited labs to do the validation to issue certificate. The, then all the algorithms implemented 
in the cryptographic module will be um, tested. This is uh, uh, validated. This is a prerequisite of cryptographic module validation. So the current, uh, we are on the fifth 140-3, uh, this uh, uh, standards. Uh, this standard is based on two ISO uh, standards and for the, uh, the module requirements and for test requirements. And the fifth 140-3 um, uh, also has some kind of uh, related special publications for uh, US specific applications and uh, also US specific kind of algorithms. Then uh, the first is approved algorithm and then a certified crypto module. Um, however, that's not enough yet because the cryptographic is in a constant transition because it increased the computing power by Moore's law. Remember the first encryption standard like a DS only ha has 56 bits of the key. So at that time in 1970s, two to the 56 is a large number for the com uh, computing power at, this at that time. But today the two to the 56 is not that high and it's very easily to tackle by the today's computing power. Then always has some new computing technologies such as quantum computers and the parallel computing. And also during years, a lot of more sophisticated crypto analysis techniques are um, uh, uh, discovered like a differential crypto analysis, linear crypto analysis, multi-key attack, uh, et cetera. So we needed to do the transition because of this. Historically, NIST has guided many transitions. Um, the specification is in uh, SP800-131A. So we, we had the transition from single DAS to triple DAS to AES. For hash function, we have transition from SHA-1 to SHA-2 and the SHA-3 families. We also have the transition for same algorithms, but a different key size. For example, like RSA, we have the transition for the modular size from 1024 bits to 2048 bits. That means from security strings from 80 bits to minimum 112 bits. So the more transitions are expected. Uh, for example, like uh, we will talk about uh, post quantum cryptography. Um, so how to deal with the cryptographic transition, uh, the cryptographic agility is very important for the future transitions. This uh, agility will allow to make a smooth transition between algorithms and the configurations. Please note that in uh, the, the program of this conference tomorrow, will, uh, there will be a talk on the cryptographic agility. So then I will uh, discuss the challenges in the next generation of the crypto standards. Um, so, uh, the first uh, challenge is we will need to deal with extremes. So the extremely powerful attacks like uh, quantum computers and also extremely controlled environment like sensors. So you will think these two extremes will not go together very well in a system because the attackers are powerful. However, the results are limited. And the, the second uh, challenge is the transition and the backward compatibility. The transition will be required uh, constantly. Then we need to work on the backward compatibility. Then also because of the pervasive applications of uh, uh, cryptographic standards, 
it demands a diversified portfolio. And on the other hand, it will also require interoperability. Uh, for example, in TLS, there are many uh, cipher suites to fit into different kind of platforms. However, the client and the server need to agree on a cipher uh, suite. That's what we talk about uh, interoperability. Then the next uh, challenge I want to highlight is um, about a special usage versus general purpose standard. So far, these uh, cryptographic standards uh, for, uh, for general usage, like uh, AES, is a general usage crypto standard. However, in the future, we will have standard for special usage. We'll talk about lightweight cryptography, which will be used in the constrained envi environment. And uh, then because of the industry has been very active in adopting uh, different kind of cryptographic uh, tools. And NISA want to inter, uh, synchronize with industry best practice. So this is not uh, always very straightforward because of the, uh, mm, uh, the diversified uh, different kind of uh, industry and different kind of best practice. And uh, uh, the last but not least, uh, least is under the Department of Commerce of the federal government. We will promote international adoption for uh, US vendors. So from that point of view, NIST has been actively working with the international community for the cryptographic standards. However, we also have some kind of uh, special challenges for special countries, uh, um, national um, standards and the special areas of the uh, crypto standards. Then uh, uh, I will discuss some new initiatives to deal with uh, these two um, kind of extremes. The first one is the post quantum cryptography uh, to deal with uh, um, quantum attacks. And another is uh, lightweight cryptography to deal with uh, um, constrained environment. So, um, Postal quantum cryptography is in the public key based cryptography and the lightweight cryptography right now we are focusing on symmetric key based. So I will talk the postal quantum cryptography first. So uh, let's look at the quantum impact. I think a lot of audience probably already heard that uh, the current uh, well deployed public key crypto uh, systems uh, like RSA, DT Herman, ECDSA are uh, not secure for the quantum computers. Why? Because quantum computing changed what we have believed about the hardness of a discrete log and the factorization problem. Like a DT Herman is based on the discrete log problem and RSA is based on the integer factorization problem. So that means we need to replace this uh, well deployed public key cryptography. You might have a question, see what is the uh, impact for the quantum, quantum computing to symmetric key-based cryptography? Um, so uh, yes, the answer is yes. Because of the Groover's algorithm, quantum computing indeed impact symmetric key-based cryptography. However, the impact is manageable by increasing the key size. Why? Because the Groover's algorithm will reduce the complexity to a square root. That means for AES 128, um, the, the, from the classical security is 128 bits, 
and the quantum security is 80, uh, 64 bits. So we can increase the key size to deal with quantum impact to symmetric key-based cryptography. NIST started the post-quantum cryptography uh, effort uh, since 2016, and we uh, published powerful proposals. By 2017, we received 82 submissions from 25 countries and six continents. Um, so uh, 69 was passed as the fourth round of candidates. During the last uh, about four years, we narrowed twice from the fourth round to the second round, and from second round to the third round. So we will have a conference June 7 to 9, uh, at least the PQC standardization conference uh, um, uh, coming soon to discuss about uh, the current candidates and uh, to discuss, uh, discuss, present the research result. NIST plan to release uh, draft standards and um, for call for public comments in 2022 to 2023 timeframe. So I will talk um, uh, more details. Um, so you said that the discrete log is not secure and the integer factorization is not secure for quantum computers. Then the question is whether we have hard problems. Uh, they are hard for both the classical computers and the quantum computers. So the answer is yes. So during the last decade, it has been very active in the post-quantum cryptography research. Uh, we have some categories based on the hard problems, like a lattice-based, code-based, multivariate, hard-based and symmetric key-based signatures, and also Asagi-based elliptic curve uh, cryptography. So uh, the next scope uh, for the post-quantum cryptography is uh, public key encryption and the key encapsulation mechanism for key establishment. Like uh, today, we use the Diffie-Hellman and also RSA encryption. And also another category is digital signatures, like uh, RSA signature used today. So these uh, colorful proposals uh, really um, adopted uh, well accepted uh, uh, security definitions. And also we give sec five security levels for the submitters to provide the parameters for the each of the algorithm. Then uh, let's have a quick look about the first, the second, and the third round candidates. Uh, the first round candidates distributed in these uh, viral uh, research the categories and uh, uh, some of the categories have both signatures and uh, also KEM and encryption. So uh, you might ask why this is 64, not a 69, because five of them uh, were broken right away. That means the first round candidate essentially are 64. The second round, uh, we have 26 candidates also distributed in the different categories, but we have for the lattice based, we have both signatures and uh, also the KEM and encryption. For the third round, we have two kind of uh, uh, numbers. One is the red number means the finalist and the green number means the alternative alternate candidates. Uh, why we have these two categories, finalists and uh, alternate candidates, because uh, this the team considers that the finalists um, kind of the, the group, uh, this will select at the end of the third round. 
the, um, the alternate candidate will need a further kind of research. So in the, this narrow down from the first round to the second round and to the third round, needs to consider security, uh, uh, including uh, classical security and quantum security. Uh, also consider performance, uh, the size of the parameters like uh, digital signature size and also um, the uh, uh, like a signature size and the speed of the key generation, uh, encryption, decryption, signature, verification. And we consider other issues like uh, IP issues, like a size channel resistance and other uh, uh, characteristics for the narrow down. So um, then uh, before we have the standard, we need to prepare for the transition and the migration because today public key cryptography has been used everywhere. So we cannot afford the disruption either in the operation or in the security. So we need to start to prepare this transition now. And then we need to identify um, uh, some applications which use public key cryptography and also identify the limitations about uh, public key cry cryptography usage in these kind of applications. What is the limit on their key size? What is the limit on the signature size? We, whether there is a bandwidth limitation for transfer, uh, transmit, and uh, so whether uh, we need to adopt this protocol, adapt these protocols for the postal quantum cryptography. So after the postal quantum cryptography, I like to talk about lightweight cryptography. So lightweight cryptography is not a, a, a weak cryptography. Why? Because uh, uh, the attackers will be as powerful as everything else. And also recognize the need for the cryptographic standards for applications in constrained environment. And now that is not an easy task because during uh, 2015 and 2016, we had uh, two workshops to get the feedback from industry. And some people say, yes, we need a lightweight cryptography for the constrained environment. Some say, no, we don't. AES works for all our applications. So um, NIST has kind of uh, many back and forth discussions through the forum, through the emails, workshops, the report and everything. And uh, finally in 2018, we NIST made the decision to um, uh, call for contributions for lightweight cryptography. Uh, we need to understand that the task is not light. We need a heavy lifting because the attacker's model uh, is, could be po as powerful as everything else. And also the constraint properties are different for different applications. Some uh, limit the hardware area for the implementation. Some has the uh, consumption, uh, power consumption uh, concern some consider that the throughput is a kind of very important and some also has a memory limitation. So this is a very challenge. However, NIST has determined to work on this area to satisfy the protection need in today's internet of things and the pervasive encryption and the protection. So the, the first, the scope, 
is a symmetric key uh, based authenticated encryption with the optional hash function. Uh, the hash function must use the same and the primitive as the authenticated encryption to make uh, the uh, sure it will save the, 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 the results. And the candidates include uh, block ciphers and uh, um, tickable block ciphers and the stream ciphers and the permutations. So the design reflected the technology advanced in the past 20 years. And the most of the designs are based on the primitives used in the standard algorithms. Because for lightweight cryptography, NIST has been very clear about to use mature designs so that we want to, uh, these algorithms have been in the community for a while to get a, a good scrutinized uh, scrutinizing and analysis. And many of the candidates um, claimed security features. So by April 2019, we have the first round of 56 candidates. August 2019 uh, narrowed down quickly to 32 candidates because uh, 56 is kind of too large. Well, 32 is still a very large number, but we kind of think we wanted to uh, give people uh, some opportunity to look into different kind of design ideas. Very recently, uh, narrowed down to 10 uh, finalists. So the security analysis and the maturity assessment were provided by the design team and the independent third parties. So we really appreciate the community give us support in the security analysis and also the um, performance, uh, performance benchmarks the, to allow us to make the comparison to better understand the performance on the different platforms. Uh, we expect to announce the final winners in about 20 uh, month, uh, in about uh, 12 months. So uh, in summary, um, NIST crypto standard has been a cornerstone used for the, to protect communication links and uh, establish trusted platforms. Uh, NIST crypto standards are developed for non-national security applications. That means for the government usage, need to use approved algorithms and a certified cryptographic module. And the next generation standards will deal with uh, quantum threats, uh, with uh, post quantum cryptography, and uh, will deal with uh, pervasive protection demand for the constrained environment through lightweight uh, cryptography. Um, I like to end my talk here. This is, is my contact information, and uh, please. Uh, uh, let me know if you have further questions, and then you can also find the NIST crypto standards and the validation uh, in this website. So thank you uh, for your attention. <laughs>